can't see it. There you go, on. Is it? I have no idea what it is. Pretty good size, isn't it? That's one. Nice one. I think you do have one. It's a big today. I gotta catch them pretty fast. The guy don't show up till four o'clock in the afternoon. Go fishing. I see fishing on the street or a little bit. First hook up. First hook up. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Come and go along with me. Oh, my goodness. You see it? I think it's a bite. Yeah, I don't know if I got him good. He hit it falling. Nice fish. We have an incredibly beautiful, ooh, a nice fish. Day out here today. It's almost too pretty to catch fish. It's gonna be about 85 degrees, but it's been cold. It's been down to 30. Oh, nice fish. What a great way to start the day right there. It is dead slick, dead calm out here. Look at that fish. Wow, what a way to start the day. Looky there, back here and land that thing. He hit it falling. I got a Tokyo rig on there. See that Tokyo rig? That's one of my buddy up in Kansas built and sent me. This one's got a three-way swivel on it. He builds them actually both ways. Looky there. What a way to start the day out. I just barely had him hooked, but I had him hooked good enough. Looky there, what a way to start the day. Nice five-pound bass. Short, chunky fish, not very long, but God, look at the size of him. That girl is gonna grow up and be a monster. Yeah, a lot of times when a fish hits falling like that, uh, it might mean there's, there's other fish in the area because I'm out here in about 12 or 14 foot of water trying to fish some isolated structure. The water temperature has fallen from 83 degrees down to about 70. So it's really changed quite a little bit. Golly, yes, what a way to start. Yeah. Great way to start any day. Big fish of the day, huh? Big fish of the day? <laughs> I'd say so, it's the only fish of the day. I never felt anything except a bite. The bait never hit bottom. Ooh, there's one right there. Off structure fish. Oh, God, it's a big one. Cold. Gee, gee whiz. Golly, this might be a giant. This could be a 10 pounder. God, look at him pull. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that fish pull. Look at that. God, holy cow. If you come up and you're three pounds, I'm going to throw my rod and reel in the lake and throw up. I didn't have a 12 pound fight. This has got to be a giant. I mean, this has got to be a giant. He's a big bass. Golly, he's not 10 pounds. He's big, though. I came down there in that clear water. He's seven pounds. <laughs> Come here, God, no, baby. Oh, oh man. Yeah, he's over, well over seven. Look how fat he is. Look how fat that fish is. Wow, big old lucky strike. Paddle tail worm on a, I'll show you that, the Tokyo, Tokyo rig in a, in a minute. Buddy of mine up in Kansas made those. There's a seven pounder right there. That's a seven pound bass, seven plus, seven, might be closer to eight than he is seven. Giant, giant bass. Mm. Holy cow. Gee whiz, golly, holy smokes. Did you see that fish pull? Gee whiz. What I'm fishing is isolated structure, isolated structure, offshore. Not structure that you can see, but I should need to hit that spot lock and I wouldn't be drifting off every time I get so excited when I get a bite, because I fish quite a while without a bite. You gotta hit the right piece of isolated structure. But I'm fishing structure that's offshore, not structure that I can see except by my locator. When as you see, mostly it's a flat bottom. Look at that right there. 14 foot deep, a flat bottom. This is one of the unusual places that you can catch fish that not everybody else in the lake finds because not many people are gonna stop and fish one little piece of structure out here in 14 foot of water. They just go right over it. They see it, it's a stump or a piece of brush or some grass or a log or sunken boat. It could be just about anything down there. 
I hit one piece of structure down there. The first 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 fish I caught, I didn't I didn't I didn't hit anything. He hit on a, on the fall. And I finally hit that structure again. I hit that structure again. Got that big one. This portion of Jimmy Houston Outdoors has been brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Jimmy Houston Outdoors, America's favorite fishing show, is brought to you by Tracker Boats. Call 1-800-TRACKER today. By Mercury Marine. Go boldly. By Shell Rotella, the engine oil that works as hard as you do. And by Super Start Batteries, available exclusively at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's a fish. Oh yeah, right there. One little piece of stuff I hit. A oh, nice fish. <laughs> <laughs> you see him jump like a tarpon, a tarpon bass. Yeah, one little bitty piece of brush. Nice fish. That Tokyo rig is really, really good around that brush. It'll fall through it. It doesn't get hung up much. You really kind of use it anywhere you use a Texas rig. You know, the only the the main deal is your your worm is just free. It's just back here all by itself. It doesn't have anything to encumber it. That's a vegetable, isn't it? An encumber? I think it is. An encumber. It's a vegetable. Doesn't have anything to encumber the action. <laughs> Here's a fish, I think. It acts like a little one. I got him. Pretty nice fish. God, acts like a little one, Jimmy. Yeah, it acts like a little one. Here's a fish. Acts like a little one. Golly, Jimmy, that fish is 20 foot deep. I guarantee you, 18 foot deep. 18 foot deep. Look at the belly on that booger, will you? That's a nice fish right there. Golly, that's a healthy fish. My goodness. Come here, baby. Jump over. Jump over in the boat with me. Yeah. Look at that fish. Wow. One of the things you're going to find fishing with big worms. I know little worms catch a lot of fish. And they, they're really good for finesse fishing, but big worm produce fish like that. That's a nice, big, beautiful bass right there. That is a, look at the belly on that booger, will you? That's what people say when they see me. <laughs> look at the belly on that booger. Yeah, baby. Tokyo rig. That fish was in a little piece of brush out there in 18 foot of water. You know, I mentioned earlier that the water temperature had cooled down to that's 71.3. It's warmed up a little bit in this hot sunshine today. But that fish hit so lightly, I thought it was a bluegill. I mean, he hit so lightly, I thought it was a bluegill. I hit one little piece of brush down there in 18 foot of water. I mentioned that I thought those fish might go shallower, and I, and I think a lot of them probably have. Uh, I think a lot of them have. One little piece of brush down there in that open water in 18 feet, and I felt this little tick, and I, I picked it up, and it didn't feel like nothing. And, but it was moving just a little bit, and I thought, surely that's a little crappie or a bluegill or something. I've been having some bluegill bite my worms in two today anyway. 18 foot deep. Some of the fish have gone deeper. I bet you some of them have gone shallower. So where do you fish? Zero to 18. <laughs> Zero to 18, that's where you fish, Jimmy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, zero to 18. There it is, there it is, there it is. There it is. I got to come through it then. Feel the bush, they're coming up. Come on, look at that, nice one. Nice one, I thought he was gonna jump three foot in the air right then. Look at that mammy jammer. Come here, baby. This is another, and probably, it's the way to break. Oh, perfect, was that a perfect catch or what? Hey, I want you to look at this, I want you to look at this. No, it's, it's out. I thought it wasn't even out of the worm. It's just barely out of the worm. Point of my hook is just barely, barely out of the worm. He was just barely hooked. That was another five pound fish. I don't think that was the fish that I lost in that brush pile a minute ago. That fish pulled me back on top of the brush pile. The brush pile, the tree that I'm catching a fish out of is right there. There's a fish. Golly, that's a good fish. He's down in a tree. I hit, well, I hit a tree, he's down. See, see, I feel my line rubbing that tree. This is a bad deal right here. He's, he's got my line down under a tree and it's a big fish. 
I, I got to be careful. I got 20 pound high seas grand slam on here, which is a really good line, but it's down under a limb. I got the fish has got to swim out of the limb, not get hung up. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. That's, that's not as big as I thought he was. He felt like he's bigger than that. That's pretty good though. I mean, ah, I got to check that line out. That's pretty good right there. That's pretty good. I was in that tree and the fish hit in the tree. My worm's gone. My worm's all gone. All I have is my Tokyo rig. That's a nice fish right there. That is a good fish. Mm. One of the things that you got to really concentrate on, I'm going to have to retie. My deal was, the, the, way back here, look at here, here's, here, here's where my line scratched. That was the part right back there. The fish was here about basically three feet away, and right there is where the line's all scratched up. So I got to retie, and I got to, I'm going to have to cut this off. Put your last Lucky Strike Baby Huey worm on. I'm just hoping that I've got another package of those somewhere, because that's what they're biting. And I have one left, only one. Pick up all my crumbs, put in there in my trash, it's in my boat. God, that was a nice fish. The heavy line, the heavy line, you want to use that heavy line? You want to use that heavy line because if you're fishing down in that brush because it allows the fish to saw more. If I'd have had 10 or 12 pound test line, without a doubt, that fish would have probably sawed that in two. But now, and also I was not putting much pressure on them. When the fish would take off, I would let the fish go. That's a critical thing to do. Fighting fish is very, very, very critical and very important. Everybody there thinks you just get them on there, you wind them in, you're in business. But battling them is important. The heavy line allows you to scrape, 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 but make sure you don't put in real hard pressure because if he's pulling hard against that and you're really fighting back against trying to get him out of there, let him run, wind him back. Let him run, wind him back. He eventually came right back out of the brush pile the same way he went down in it. And uh, when I felt my worm down in that brush, that's when he hit. He just took off right down through there and I could feel it scraping right after I set the hook on him. So that 20 pound test line allow you to do that. This portion of Jimmy Houston Outdoors is brought to you by Power Pole Shallow Water Anchor. Jimmy's Look Back is brought to you by Tracker Boats. Call 1-800-TRACKER today. You know, is there a spook is not really hard to work. A lot of people think it is. One of the key things, of course, let all that ripple die down. One of the key things is you've got to say, get that bait set sideways. Once you set it sideways, when you work it, you work your rod in a downward motion. See this right here? A downward motion. And you're not jerking back, but you're actually working down. See what I'm doing with my wrist right there? Down, just like that. A downward motion, and you're picking up line. You're picking up line on the slack. In other words, you're not winding the line in when it's tight. You always wind it in when it's slack. If you're working at this bait correctly, your line's gonna actually be a little slack on your, a little loose on your reel right here, which I don't like it loose on the reel, but that's really what it's gonna be. Whoa, yes. Golly. That's a nice fish right there. Boy, he eat that bait up. Look at that dude. Oh man, that is a topwater fish deluxe right there. He ate it up. That's been some of them I've been missing, been like that. Nah. Another thing you'll find out in topwater baits is it will draw a big fish. There's no doubt about that. It will draw a big fish. And that's a killer right there. I don't know how I can get my finger in his mouth very easily. I need a dip net right now. He got a whole mouthful of treble hooks. He won't open his mouth. Hold him line. Oh. Man, it's not good to lift those in like that, but I didn't want to get hooked. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Looky there. He just had one little bit of treble in him right there. One, that's all. Now that is topwater bass fishing right there. Ah. I love it. <sighs> Goodbye, baby. Ooh. You know, if those clouds hadn't rolled in here, it's 8.20. If those clouds hadn't rolled in here, that sun would have been bright right now. That little big fish 
Ralph might not have come up and got that thing. I want another big one. I don't care how big he is, just as long as he splashes atop the water. Jimmy's Look Back has been brought to you by Tracker Boats. Call 1-800-TRACKER today. Well, here's a fish. Oh, come here, baby. Boy, they are out here in the middle on little bitty pieces of stuff. I mean, little bitty pieces of stuff. God, they're nice fish, too. I haven't caught a little fish all day. This is not a little one here, either. I'll try to lift him in, I think. I can get a good look at him. He's pretty big. I think I can lift him in. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, buddy, you can lift him in. You bet, Jimmy. That's perfect right there. Look at that fish. Will you look at that fish? That's a nice, big, beautiful bass. Look at the baby doll. Ooh, baby Huey. Baby Huey. Wasn't Baby Huey a cartoon character? Isn't that what Baby Huey was? It's like a duck or something? A duck, Baby Huey. When I started early this morning, I mentioned something about the water temperature falling from falling from uh, from, from uh, 83 degrees down to 70 degrees. <clears throat> I said we probably ought to be up there in some shallower water throwing a spinnerbait. Let's wheel a spinnerbait around a little bit, find some shallower water. Oh, that's one. Well, we got it. Good one, too, man. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, a good one. Come on, ate that spinnerbait. I mean, ate that spinnerbait. Look at that fish, guys. Oh, man. That's the kind of spinnerbait fish I was thinking about. Oh, up here in the mouth of this creek. Nice fish, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Great fish right there. Nice four pound bass, beauty. That fish is shallow. We're not quite as fat as those fish out deep. Sometimes, sometimes those deeper fish just don't really work as hard to get their food. Come up right beside that big old tree right there. Come up and got it. I had it about a foot down, you know. It wasn't right on top of the water. Water is so clear. This time of the year, the water gets really, really. Ooh, there's one. Oh, that's a better one there. I'm getting a little bite to hit it a lot. Oh man, they're strong. Not a giant, but it's a pretty nice fish. Woo! Yeah, it's a nice one. Spinnerbait bass. One of the things that you learn during tournament fishing is that they're biting a lot of different ways. You know, you think you got them figured out and you do and you're catching them pretty good. But you see what we've done here today, we're fishing out isolated structure in deep water, catching fish, some of them down as deep as 18 feet deep, 19 feet deep. And yet we're up here now, catching them under a little bit of wind, a little bit of cloud cover on spinner baits and almost no water at all. Fishing that bait down about just a few inches under the water, down to maybe a foot, foot and a half under the surface and catching really nice quality fish just like this too. Not the kind of quality we was catching in that deep water. Now there's no doubt about that. Although I have caught one or two really nice ones on that spinner bait. Jimmy Houston Outdoors is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. By High Seas, when the money's on the line. By Jackson Kayak, Advantage Fisherman. By Orion Coolers, never lose your cool. And by Lucky Strike, where preparation and opportunity collide. Houston's Helpful Hits is brought to you by Jimmy Houston High Tech Performance Fishing Rods. Nice one. Oh. Spinner bait. If I can get him out of there, he got every tree come loose. No, he didn't. He's still on there. Every tree in the world I was around. That's a nice fish. Oh, very nice fish. <laughs> I mean, I was around every tree in the world. I've been throwing that thing for an hour and a half since I caught that last fish, and I hadn't had a bite. 
And then I, I get that nice guy. That's a good one right there. Yeah. Ugh. But I lost my white spinner bait, so I put on a uh, fire tiger. That's the first bait I got on a fire tiger, but that's a good one. You know, we just caught a lot of big fish today. We caught a lot of big fish out there in that fishing individual uh, structure objects down deep, individual things we was looking for on the locator, and then, and then fishing with a with a worm on a Tokyo rig. I switched over and. Mwah! <laughs> Great sugar. Switch over to my Jimmy Houston Legend spinner bait because I just had to turn that reel handle. And there's just not that many fish up in shallow water. I went for, I, I've gone for an hour and a half without a bite, except for some little old tiny ones. I'm getting a little tiny bass to hit just about every, every cast. But I finally caught one good one there. I caught three or four other good ones on it. So a great day out here on the water. Remember, if you're going to fish individual structure objects out in deep water, you want to fish slow, you want to have a good locator, you want to fish big worms, Pay attention to your locator at all times, and you'll catch some really big fish. Well, it's late in the day, and the sun's getting low. Caught me a big one, but I let him go. I sure had fun just watching him stretch my line. I made me a lifetime memory out here fishing Jimmy Houston and me. Hey, Jimmy. I think we'll have to go again.